One of my favorite tools in all of D&D Beyond is the Encounter Builder. While it is still in beta, it has been super helpful in helping streamline combat for me in my live game and on the stream that we do every Friday. So today, I thought I would go over how to use the Encounter Builder in your campaign right now. First thing, just keep in mind that this is still in beta, so there may be things that might not work perfectly, but even still, it has been amazing for me to use. So let's go ahead and do that now. If I go over to Tools in D&D Beyond and go to Encounters, it's going to give me a list of my encounters, but since I don't have any, it's going to ask me to make an encounter. So first off, I'll go ahead and create one. I can go ahead and call this, um, let's just call this Ogre Encounter, right? We're gonna have some ogres in this fight. So simple enough, I have all of the monsters available to me that I have access to on d, &D Beyond, and I can simply filter it however I want or type the name to search for the monster that I'm looking for specifically. I just like to simply type the name of the monster I'm looking for, if you know it, and find the monster. We can see I have an ogre here, and I just simply click add. Now, if you wanted to add multiple ogres into the fight, don't have to do this. This is different than coming over here and hitting the plus over here. And let me explain that. Every block over here in the encounter summary is effectively a block of monsters. When you're using the encounter builder, these blocks of monsters go on the same initiative. So if you wanted two ogres to go at the same time in combat, you can add the plus two here. So there's two ogres that will be acting on the same initiative bonus. If you wanted both of the ogres to act individually with different initiatives, you would instead put two blocks of ogres there. So that was one block ogre one, ogre two, and now they're separate in combat. You can still add one or two more on top of that if you want, but just know that every little icon or block over here is going to have its own separate initiative. Now, you may notice that as I add things into this as well, there's a little bar here with uh, difficulty and everything like this. This is actually the difficulty for the challenge rating of the players. This depends entirely on your number of characters and your average level party. The cool thing with D&D Beyond is that you can adjust this to your campaign. And while I don't have campaign set up on this current account, I can hit manage characters and I can choose what level of characters I want this to be balanced against. For example, I can see I have right now four level five characters. If I wanted it to be three level five characters, I can simply do that, close it, and now it's a number of characters three, average party level five. And this is what allows me to balance the challenge rating of the encounter against my party, right? As I delete more characters, this encounter gets much more deadly, right? I can also just change the preset of four level one characters, four level five characters, 11 characters, and so on. Or if you have a campaign with characters attached to it, you can actually choose the campaign to get an accurate rating of the characters in your campaign against this encounter, which is something I use in our live stream game a lot. But for now, we'll just go ahead and use the base four level five characters and close that out. Now, based on the challenge rating system, Two ogres should not necessarily be a really difficult combat, in fact, it should be pretty easy. I will say that challenge rating is a tricky system, and you may need to learn more about the challenge rating system to truly understand how this encounter summary will work or actually function in the game. So play around with it a little bit, see what works for you, and see what actually is deadly or easy for your players, because I find that my players tend to get past difficult or hard encounters relatively easier um, than I would expect. So. This is really just kind of a balancing act of truly understanding the CR and the power of your players. But again, it depends on your campaign. Um, if I wanted to add a half ogre in here, I will hit add. And now it's a medium difficulty campaign and we can go with that. Now, once I have all of this set and all of my enemies good to go, I can actually hit save and it will automatically save this encounter. And it will now be put into my encounters here under tools and go back to encounters. Uh, or my encounters rather and we can see that the ogre encounter is right here if i wanted to open it up or click it right there it'll bring up all the information about this encounter and i can actually just straight up run it from here however i'm not going to run it yet if i wanted to edit this again i can click on the three dots and hit edit 
And just like that, I can go right back to the editing phase where I edit all this information. I also have a summary here where I can have a short, short brief summary of ogres, yo. Uh, don't die. And I can even add some treasure here attached to this encounter. So we'll just say 15 gold and save that. But either way, that's effectively how you use the encounter builder. If you wanted to run it during combat, I'll show you how it works. We come to our ogre encounter and click run encounter. From here, the characters tell you your initiative and you just simply type in their initiative. Character one got a 14, character two got a seven, character three got a three, and character D got a 19. Then you simply roll the initiative of your uh, creatures. Ogre one got a 14, ogre two got a 17 and a half, ogre got a five. Once you're done with that, you hit start and you're good to go with combat. We can see that player D starts off first and then once their turn concludes, you simply hit next and the blue box indicates whose turn it is. Now, the best part about this is that you don't have to have multiple pages in your player's handbook monster manual open or multiple pages on your website open. You can actually click on the monster and it shows you their stat block right there so you don't have to jump from page to page to page in order to find the stat block for what your character or enemy wants to do. Same thing, if I wanted to say go down, okay, character A, ogre A, player B. Now the half ogre's turn, if I wanted to see what the half ogre can do, simply click on the half ogre. Unfortunately, I don't own the half ogre, but if I did, their uh, stat block would be right here. That's a bummer. But either way, it's the same kind of functionality. And I can also see their entire health pool here. So while I don't have information on the half ogre, I can see, let's say my players have started attacking this ogre. I can simply type in, maybe they got nine damage, hit damage, and I can see that this ogre has 50 out of 59 hit points. Same thing with this ogre, minus 15 damage, they're at 44 out of 59. It is so helpful to track everything going on in this um, because it's just pretty much a list. And as you go and hit the next button, it guides you through it. And it also helps you keep track of turns and rounds. As you can see, as I hit next, it brings me to round two, turn one. So that way, as I'm going through this, I can keep track of the rounds and the amount of time that might've gone through. As we all know, a round is technically six seconds. So if I go through five rounds, that is five times six. So it would be 30 seconds of combat have now passed, which is good for tracking spells or just tracking timed encounters. So there's a lot here that you can use. And while it's not super duper in depth, it is still an incredibly useful tool to just keep track of things. And maybe there's monsters or things that you forgot. You can actually click manual entry and quickly import a character or an enemy into this combat. Let's say you have a new character or a new player that's joining you that you weren't prepared for and you just wanna roll them up quickly in this encounter. Well, simply go here, type the name, new player, type in their max HP, you know, 50, type in their AC, 14, speed, 30, initiative, they roll the 15 and quantity one. Now we have the new player right there and we can simply use that to keep track of whose turn it is in combat. So there's a lot to it. There's a lot you can do, but honestly, it's very helpful for just simple keeping track of combat without having to have initiative trackers, physical things on the table, writing notes in a notebook. It just keeps it all set in one place, keeps it safe and easy, and then just have to hit the next button to move on to keep track of what's going on. So that's all I got for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Let me know and I'll be happy to answer them um, as I see them come in. I see and read every comment, reply to every single one of them pretty much, specifically if they're questions. And um, I mean, I might even feature it in the next video. Who knows? I might make a video about something else too. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on Friday.